So let's talk about Lady Smoke by Laura Sebastian. It's the sequel to Ash Princess and you know that sometimes when you pick the second book on a series it's like uh, it suffers from second book syndrome and uh, you know you feel like cheated because it isn't as good as the first one or maybe because it's just filler so it can be guaranteed that there's a third one and so many other things that get inside the second book syndrome idea. It doesn't happen with this one. If I loved the first one, I gave that five stars over five. I have to say that I love the second one the same or even more than the first one. And that's not easy because the first one for me put the level very high because um, Laura treats lots of things in her book. Uh, I said in the first review that her books has this kind of darkness. I mean, it's not like there is a lot of blood um, fights and things like that, because there is that. But it's more the fact that she talks about trauma, about how abused, being singled out, how being almost eradicated in, in, in yourself, uh, like su surviving an invasion and having people trying to make you forget everything that you were, even your own name, and surviving all of that, how much it changes you, it changes a person, it changes you. So that was something that made me respect Laura a lot because I, I think that she dealt with lots of things that were very strong and being the other book, Ash Princess, her debut, her debut book, it was like, whoa, she has some ovaries. So, yeah, this one, it's amazing. We are going to keep following Theo. Um, if you haven't read the first book, just stop seeing the review because there's going to be spoilers of the first book. Okay. Um, Theo has managed to escape the Kaiser. Or Kaiser, I'm not sure how it's pronounced. And she has fled. Uh, she has met herself with Dragon's Bane. Artemisia's mother and she has discovered that um, Dragon's, Man, Dragon's Bane is the twin sister of her mother but they could be more different in the way they act, in the way they move, so in everything. So in this book we are going to see Theo. Um, she is going to be following at the beginning of the book the advice that Dragon's Bane offers and that advice compromises the fact that Theo should be married. Uh, it's like uh, she's selling herself in order to get uh, an army, in order to get support, in order to have a fighting chance to recover Astria from the Kaiser. So it's going to be a lot of talk in this book about um, marriages for power, how the figure of the woman is sold out to the highest buyer, how sometimes there are different cultures that doesn't care if they marry a kid with an old man and how um, power always takes everything it can from the people around them. And sometimes, uh, the worst of all, it's that sometimes those in power, those who have um, who have the power and the corruption make the victim believe that this is what should be done because it's always been done like that. So I love that this book shows that and also this idea of having this matriarchy in Austria and also we are going to find a figure of an empress and I love that they talk about it's nice to see other women, other women in power. So yeah, yay for that. Also, I love that we are going to have uh, lots of thoughts about refugee camps. When Theo arrives to this place where she's going to be auction off, <laughs> it's, it, it's, yeah, I'm laughing, but it's not a laughing matter. But, you know, she's going to, to go to this uh, reign in which she is going to meet all these suitors that are going to fight for her hand. And also she, uh, is, she knows that in this place there is a refugee camp with survivors from Austria and from other regions. And she demands to see that. She wants to see the people. She wants to talk with them. And she expects them to be settled off, having a nice life. And what she finds in there 
uh, on most breaks here. I'm not going to be very spoilery about this book, okay? Let's say that the plot revolves with Theo and her friends going to this uh, other reign so she can be uh, auctioned off, as I say, to find a suitor so she can have a fighting chance to recover a studio. And then she's going to see the situation, as I was saying, of the refugees that managed to get to that place. And she's going to keep on planning on ways to um, get rid of the Kaiser and the influence that he has. And I'm going to say nothing more about the plot. Because one of the things that I find in these books is that nothing is ever as expected to be. It's even greater. greater. I mean... Everything that happens in these almost 500 pages keep me on the edge of my seat. I just devote this book in one day because I couldn't put it down. Because that which I explained to you just now is just a general idea. But there is so many twists and turns and character development and situations and reflections and lots of great things that makes me love this book a lot. As I say, we are going to have to think about also um, what it's done with people who seek refuge, refugee. Oh, sorry, I don't know how to say that. Uh, we are in, in when they talk about refugee camps in this book, they are going to have a very critic point of view of how the people who are there are treated, the opportunities they have, the chances they have, and how I, they are treated or mistreated. And I think that's very important because it's something that can also be found in the society we have right now. And also, again, I love the characters of this book. I love how Laura manages to again keep uh, presenting us with characters that are completely flawed. They, they are human. I read someone, I think it was Samantha, Samantha Shannon, that was saying that people demand to have characters that are human, that they have flaws, that they do wrong things. And it's sad that when the, the authors deliver these kinds of characters, people complain because they are imperfect. And it's like, what? I love when characters are imperfect. And I love when authors go to the effort of creating this, this sort of characters that take bad decisions, bad choices, there was a moment in this book in which we have Theo going with a person and I was like screaming at her, what the hell are you doing? And she's drinking something and I was like, I was going to go there and slap her and say, what are you doing? But I think that's the greatest thing. We have this character that she's always expecting danger from everywhere. She doesn't trust people because she has been abused. She has been... Um, persecuted and she has been convinced that she was enough as she was so sometimes she uses slips she sometimes messes up she's human and I love her for that and I love that the rest of characters that go with her they have also the humanity around them I love all of them I love how Blaze it's a it's a struggling with his power he knows he might be dumb but he tries to find always the bright side of the situation. He knows that uh, when you are in a war, when you want something, sometimes you have to give something in return. You can keep it, keep it all. So he knows that maybe he will have to take some choices. And I love that the rest of the characters, they don't want him to do certain things, but they think it's his choice, it's his right. And I love the support they show, they show him. Like, okay, we respect you enough to understand we might not like what you are going to do, but we respect you. And go ahead. If you think you can do that, do it. That's amazing. I love Art. I love the relationship he has with her, mother, with her mother. I love how they come from this strange place where she comes also from an abusive relationship where her mother keeps expecting her to be better, to be best. But it doesn't matter how much Art fights to be exactly what her mother wants her to be. Because she's never going to accomplish it. Her mother wants something that doesn't exist. It's always putting, setting the bar higher and higher and higher. And at some pa point in the relationship, Art is going to have to say, this is enough, this is me. If you like me, it's okay. And if you don't, it's also okay. And I love because so many people, so many of us have had relationships of this kind. It doesn't have to be a boyfriend. It doesn't have to be a friend. It can be a parent too. That person that it's asking you to give more or to be something you are not. And I love that Laura also depicts these kinds of things in, in here. 
it, it's also kind of this family of blood against family of friends troop and I love that because sometimes a family you have is enough but sometimes you need another family the family that you create by f befriending people by befriending your pets by befriending you know whatever works for you and I love that also I love Heron how um, he begins to open himself how he know how everything that he went through affects him and how he dares to hope again and I love that character and also I have to say that obviously my favorite character must be Theo I love everything that has happened to her I love that even something so simple as having her name right and badly it's just like okay no I want to stand for it I have been robbed of everything even my name and now that I have recovered it I won't allow any fucking people, you know what I mean? It's amazing amazing to have this person. And I love this conversation she has with Soren, in which she is afraid that she's turning into the Kaiser. And he tells her, you are who you are, not because of him, but in spite of him. I felt that. I felt that a lot. It's something that uh, has come to me sometimes too. So yeah, yeah, for these people who overcome trauma, who overcome abuse, and are there just to keep on fighting. And as I say, I love how Laura depicts that, and I love how it's something that really exists in their characters. You can read other books in which they talk about trauma and abuse and about bad relationships, and sometimes you flip a page and all it's over. Um, maybe a guy comes over and he miraculously saves you or maybe you just come to a realization and you just let go as if it was that easy or whatever but in reality you can spend all your life fighting trauma and fighting to be a better person and fighting to achieve whatever you want to achieve because you can't do that not because of what was done to you, also that, but also in spite of what was done to you. So yeah, I love how she depicts it dark, helpful, and how she sometimes just wakes up crying or screaming, or she wants to say, that's enough. I love that. Also Soren. Soren is another amazing character. She is, he's afraid of being just like his father, and he's trying to put to rights all the wrongs he's done. And it's amazing how he does all of, the, all of those things and how believable it is. And one of the things that I love about this book is that you have magic, you have powers, you have kings and queens and, you know, all these mystery things and this imaginary world that she has created that it's so well done that you absolutely believe it as it was real. But it's also the interactions of, of, of all the characters and everything. I have to say I love it. I love it. I cannot say it enough. I love it. And here you have the map of the world in case you want to know it. And... Um, yeah, I have to say that I'm completely in awe of what she has created in these books. And I have to say this second book, it's also five stars, over five stars for me. And I, I cannot wait to, to kind of wait to begin the third one, but I'm going just to, you know, to let this one simmer down. And I'm going to <laughs> read another thing in between because... I want to know how it ends, but at the same time, I don't want to know how it ends because that will mean it has ends. Yeah, how many ends here? But yeah, uh, I will recommend recommend this to you if you like uh, fantasy stories with amazing world buildings, incredible characters that are human. Not all of them have been abused, not all of them has been traumatized, but it's uh, something that it's featured very heavily in the books. And uh, if you like books about hope, about being able to reclaim your life and fight for what you believe in, just pick these ones because they are fucking amazing. So yeah, thank you Laura for writing this. Um, yeah, I want to read the third one, but yeah, I'm going to wait. Yeah, <laughs> thank you for watching.